hi guys how you doing welcome back so on today's episode i'm going to be talking about my unpopular opinions about motherhood okay yes it's gonna be about motherhood whatever you see at dizzy just know that motherhood is going to be involved yeah so you guys don't hate me for this i'm going to be saying my truly unpopular opinion and i know that this is unpopular opinion because anyway i say it i i get some looks and i always see people saying things to the contrary okay today i even have my match or not my match this is nello kk's match okay it is unapologetic right yes yeah. so for this video i'm going to be unapologetic if you don't like what i'm going to say today i'm sorry but i'm going to say more next time okay so is it that you hang on and keep annoying yourself or you just waka <laughs> But really, these are just my opinions that I feel like some people out there might be able to relate to or might actually just adopt because, yeah, life is easy, okay? Anyway, so the first unpopular opinion I have is that, about motherhood basically, is that it is okay to sometimes lose yourself in motherhood. I don't know what's happening with this generation, this our woke generation of, you know, you gotta be your own person, you gotta be this, you gotta be that, you know, don't be, don't be, um, don't lose yourself, don't this, don't that. I feel like we are, we have become a very selfish society where it's all about me, 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 give me, give me, I am this, I am that, I am, trust me, I understand where these things come from, but at the same time, I feel like we need to actually like cut it short okay we need to curtail these things we need to put a boundary and say right it's okay to be selfish it's okay to be all about yourself all about your growth all about your improvement but when it comes to kids that you chose to bring into this world i'm going to keep saying it throughout this video and forever and ever kids having kids was a choice right it was a choice for you to bring those kids into this world so when it comes to them i feel like this our selfishness needs to take you know the back seat we need to at some point realize that other humans baby humans young humans who are dependent on us for everything they know in this life okay for the food they eat for the knowledge they get for everything they know in this life they depend on us their parents and the society at large to actually teach them and feed them and give them all these things okay so i feel like once it gets to kids we need to uh -uh, take a step back and then reevaluate some of these ideas that we are pushing on women okay yes because i'm talking about women today i'm talking about parents in general but i'm talking about women directly because it's women that are beginning to basically wake up okay and say oh why are men allowed to go out and you know conquer the world but a woman once she has kids you know they're asking her about her kids she's not able to do it she's not able to eat her cake and have it she doesn't have as much freedom as the men you know because it's either she's pregnant or she's breastfeeding or she's taking care of kids or she's the primary caregiver of kids so why is it that women cannot do these things but men can do these things okay so yeah that's what i'm talking to women one thing i keep saying is this right i don't envy men I don't. I don't have penis envy. I don't envy men in any way, shape, or form. I don't do things because, oh, men do this, so I should be allowed to do this. Hey, hey, that's not my life, okay? I don't want to be a man. I don't feel like, I, I just don't believe that men are more advantaged than I am, okay? Of course, in society, there are places where men are more advantaged, but I be like, I'm talking about me in particular. Being a woman, I don't feel like I am inherently disadvantaged, you know, because I have a, a, a uterus, okay? Now, why do I not think so? Let me tell you something. I don't envy men. You see all these men that go around and conquer the world and this and that without thinking about their kids. I feel sorry for them, okay? Like, yes, it's me. I'm not talking about every woman I should feel sorry for every man. I'm saying me in particular... I feel sorry for them okay maybe i'm just a very mommy like person i don't know what people will call me but i feel sorry for them people say things like oh men are allowed to you know neglect their kids and you know whatever whatever i'm like no i feel sorry for them okay because men are actually important in the home fathers are very very important in the home okay so if they are missing out on their children's lives sorry for them i don't envy them for missing out on their children's lives like i don't i don't get why people people you know actually envy men for that like you are you, you feel like oh my husband can actually take a break he can travel without you know telling anybody he can stay away from my kids birthdays and he, he can decide not to attend their you know school functions or activities or whatever and he's fine but me if i do it for once everybody will be angry for me i always say this the narrative shouldn't be why can't women do these things that men are doing 
the narrative should be men should stop doing some of these things okay yeah so like i said it is okay for you to lose yourself in motherhood okay especially when your kids are still young especially look at i'm one of those people that used to lose myself in motherhood okay i lose myself in motherhood because how long will my child be a baby I always exclusive breastfeed. I don't even do it as much as many people do. Sophia was almost one year. Ava was almost um, one year as well, okay? Some people... Some people even breastfeed till two years, okay? I am one of those women that happily do exclusive. I'm one of those women that happily stay at home. I'm a proud stay at home mom. In fact, professional stay at home mom. Like, I love it. <laughs> I love it with all my heart, right? I feel like I'm living my best. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm the happiest woman on earth for being a stay at home mom. So, those people who feel bad for staying at home, I'm sorry for you because I, for me, I'm living my best life. I'm not, I don't envy people that go out there and conquer the world. I don't want to conquer the world. I'm not, I have no interest to conquer the world right anyway um yeah so i'm one of those people who actually lose themselves when they have newborns look at me now am i not still pretty do i not still look good am i not still happy my kids are now grown they don't really need me as much i lost myself in, mother in motherhood for maximum one year of my kids life is that enough to stop me i'm still achieving things i want to achieve i'm still doing things i want to do i can still stand anywhere and debate anybody on any topic okay that i have interest in okay anything i decide not to do in this life is because i have no interest in it not because anything is stopping me okay so i didn't have anything to lose by losing myself in motherhood while my kids were babies a lot of times it breaks my heart when i hear women talk about their kids as if their kids are some big inconvenience in their lives like their kids are the major source of inconvenience in their lives and i'm like why i feel like a lot of times we are us mothers are actually putting our frustration in the wrong place we are misdirecting our frustrations because these kids are not the problem the problem is that you don't have a supportive spouse the problem is that you don't have a supportive job the problem is that you don't have a good supportive system around you it is not the kids right so yeah our kids are not a big inconvenience to us we are the ones that are a big inconvenience to them your child would have been chilling in heaven dancing with the angels strolling with jesus but you decided to bring the child to this earth after doing that now or oh yeah take a few months and just take care of this child properly eh, eh, well we don't want to because our children are stressing us if we know we won't have had kids our children are just disturbing us our children are stopping us from living our best life our children are not stopping much okay of course they stop us from doing some things if you decide to take care of your kids very well and some things that you cannot do but for how long i keep asking for how long a few a few years in fact is still too small compared to the rest of your life and the rest of that child's life okay a few years and, and years is even a stress my last born is now a year and three months or so and she doesn't need me as much like i traveled to dubai i spent over I, I think i spent like 11 or 12 days you know out of this house and i came back she's looking good she's fine she's thriving she's happy she's doing well okay so it shows that she doesn't really need me as much right now i can only be there to you know oversee things make sure she's comfortable make sure she's growing well make sure she's learning well but she, does, she, but she doesn't need me as much so when your children are still small and need you much more why not sacrifice that time and just take care of your kids i guess all i'm trying to say is that we should change this narrative that having kids really limits us so much i feel like it's because we see people that don't have kids or people who are like men or people who are doing other things we see what they are doing as more important than motherhood okay i feel like i'm doing something extraordinary but no many people see motherhood as being ordinary as being basic as being mundane and we start envying those who are you know doing stuff in the world like it is not either or you can do both if you want to okay if you want to you can do both and even if you don't want to do both if you want to focus on motherhood focus on it and be happy it's not something that you should be ashamed of i feel like a lot of women are so ashamed to be either stay-at-home moms or be mothers who are all about their kids they are so ashamed about it they feel like they should there should be more right? there should be more to me than just my kids of course there's more to you than just your kids there's nobody on earth that is only about their kids two four seven like it's not a human being everything about it it's not possible so i feel like we even exaggerate that we exaggerate it when we say oh I, i'm all about my kids no you're not all about your kids okay you spend a lot of time on, on the internet pressing phone chatting nonsense talking with your friends posting stuff your kids are not there holding you back at that point okay
<laughs> your kids are not holding you back. When you really want to do things with your life, you actually go ahead and do those things. But when it comes to giving excuses, you want to use your kids as an, as an excuse why you're not living your best life. It's a lie, okay? You're just deceiving yourself and we all know these things, okay? Because, like I said, I am. you can't come and teach me about losing yourself in motherhood. I'm someone who I, I put myself inside motherhood. I read about it. I Google about it. I, I love being a mom. I de devote my time and my energy to my kids. But you can't come and tell me that those kids are the ones stopping you from achieving things in this life. You can't come and tell me that, okay? So, let's stop using our kids as excuse, okay? It is okay to be all about your children and be a, a super mom, okay? It's okay to be that for a time being, okay? After that, you go ahead and do other things with your life, okay? One, what is one year? What is two years in the rest of your life? What is it, really? Okay, so... Yeah, I've gone too much about this first point. Let's move on to the next. <laughs> the next one for me is co-sleeping, okay? A lot of people are so against co-sleeping. Don't sleep with your child in the bed. Don't put your child, don't, don't be too attached to your children. Make sure you sleep train your child. Make sure your child is this and that. Eh, see, eh? you guys should rest, I beg, rest, <laughs> okay? I co-sleep, I co-slept and I still co-sleep with my, you know, my last born i could slept with all of my kids and right now they are sleeping in their room happily okay they all have their beds they have their room to do whatever they want when it's time for bed i tell them to go to bed they go to bed and they sleep there is no extra attachment whatsoever okay yes once in a while they want to come and sleep in my room and that's because i encourage it okay so every friday one of my kids one additional kids because sophia sleeps on our bed permanently one additional kid comes and stays in my room sometimes both of them so on fridays is either cora and eva come to my room or cora or eva okay cora might come on friday so um, eva will come on saturday just friday and saturday anyway yeah so i don't have a problem with school sleeping when your child wants to, when you want your child to be independent your child to be independent you don't have to start trying to sleep train a three months old what are you doing please what are you doing why are you keeping a three months baby alone in a room i'm not saying it's bad i'm not trying to tell you that it's bad to to sleep train a child but i'm telling you that don't come and tell me that co-sleeping is, is bad too okay because i can argue it for days in fact i'm telling i'm going to tell you that your own is even worse like if you if we had to argue which was better i would tell you that your own method is not better okay so don't even come for me so i don't come for you <laughs> okay so i don't have a problem with co-sleeping i like it i love it i love having my baby in my bed yeah how do we do things how do we do things we when we want to do things we do things okay the child is not stopping anything if i if i want to have the night off to myself i can have the night off to myself you know with my husband without my my child there okay but our default settings that my baby is going to sleep in on the same bed with us i don't have a problem with it to me it doesn't affect my children's development or growth they are well-rounded you know beautiful human beings they they don't have attachment issues they don't have I don't see what the problem is with co sleeping. So please allow your baby stay in your bed if if they want to and if you want to. If you don't want to, it's fine. But don't go around telling other mothers that it's bad to co sleep. Yeah, you're spoiling the child. The child is going to be attached. This eh, eh, a child that will be attached is going to be attached. Some of you, your children are not that are sleeping in other rooms are even attached because they don't know you. They don't see you. They sleep in other rooms all night. In the morning, you go to work. By the time you come back in the evening, they are only seeing a glimpse of you before you go and sleep and they go and sleep too. So it's even you that they're looking for your attention. That's why they're attached to you but me that i give them all the attention in the world they are okay with it they're not attached to me so <laughs> anyway you guys get my point i don't really have a problem with co-sleeping i typically stop it at two years because the child is now big enough and be giving me kicks in the night that's why i stop it and because okay yes i, I need my privacy at some point but in those in those first two years when my baby is still baby like or toddler like you know still very young i don't have a problem with it it doesn't stop anything if we want to do we are going to do not with the child there but if we want to do we're going to find a way around it okay so the next one and this one i am coming for you nigerian mothers okay the next one is potty training i don't know why a lot of you nigerian women are obsessed with potty training okay take it from me who is a who is an international mother <laughs> okay Take it from me, who is very passionate about being a good mom, you know, motherhood and all of that. Take it from me, you are suffering that child. You don't have to potty train your children so early, okay? Except you are trying to save yourself from spending on diapers. Except you are trying to... I don't know what they're trying to do, Sha, but for me, it doesn't make sense potty training your children too early. Have you seen a five-year-old who cannot say, I want to go and wee? Have you seen a five-year-old who just wheezes on their body like that? So why are you obsessed with potty training? From six months, you're potty training a baby. Why? 
what do you think potty training is? How can you potty train a six month old and eight months old? And they'll be saying proudly, ah, when my child was seven months, I used to carry my child and put on the potty every single morning. Okay. Thank you, ma. But at what point did that child start using the bathroom by themselves? At what point? At what age? Okay? So if you started potty training your child from six months and the child started using the bathroom on their own without, you know, you coming to hold them down or whatever, if they started doing that at two years or one year and, and um, eight months or whatever, then it means that you started too early. You were a year too early potty training your children because for me, potty training should start when the child can actually understand the concept of going to the potty. Okay? If I have to hold you there, just so that you don't fall into the, 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 um, the potty, then you are too young. If I have to keep doing this every single morning for the rest of your life, <laughs> <laughs> or till you get older, then it means that you're too young, okay? So for me, potty training should start from one year. And in fact, 18 months is too early. I never said that from at 18 months to any of my children. But if it is hungering you to, you know, show that your child is so smart, then maybe start from 18 months, okay? Except your child on their own actually stopped it, then I can say, okay, but it's not your potty training that did it because children are different. There are some kids that were not potty trained and right now they don't wear on the bed. They're just, okay, what are some other kids that you had to teach to do it or still, you know, stopped it later on in life, as in later than, the, than, than other kids, okay? But it doesn't mean that it was your potty training that worked i'm sorry i don't know Sha. maybe you have an opposing you know opinion just leave it in the comment section but for me i feel like in nigeria especially we potty train children too early we are just too too in a hurry to stop wearing our kids diaper i'm not in a hurry when my child is ready she will stop in fact in, in from this my last for this my last child is in school they're going to potty train her when they are ready, when they feel like, okay, they want her to be using the potty in school, then I will now start it. I'm not going to initiate it and tell them to follow suit. It's when the school initiates it, and that's because she's going to school. When the school, when the school feel like, okay, they want her to be doing it in school for their own convenience, that is when I myself will start it at home, okay? Then the next one is feeding. When it comes to feeding, I feel like we are doing too much as mom. I feel like a lot of us are doing too much as moms, okay? I feel like we are so obsessed with hypernutrition when our kids are babies. Yes. What do I mean by that? I, I feel like we are too in a hurry to make sure our kids are eating everything, okay we want our kids to be eating everything we see it as a thing of pride that my child eats everything you know personally i really don't care okay because my first child cora trust me as a first child i was ready to you know do all the special you know special meals you know i was making her purees and you know cooking different stuff for her you know eggs with milk and butter and this you know potato mashed with peas and blah 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 and the child, after everything, the child was drinking only cereal and milk. When I say cereal and milk, I mean one particular cereal. She was taking just Geba oatmeal, not any other type of cereal, just Geba oatmeal and SME milk. My daughter drank this thing for almost two years, okay? Yes, when she was in school, because she started going to school, crutch, around maybe before she turned one year. So I started cooking food and putting inside her bag the crutch to used to give her food. So they would just give her small, really small food in the afternoon, okay? That was it. At home, morning, evening, she was drinking only cereal and milk, okay? But look at her today. She's eating, well, she's still picky with food, but she's healthy, she's happy, she's growing well, she's strong. At least now she eats nutritious foods and she's fine, okay? So I feel like we moms are always so worried. Oh, my child is not eating. My child is not eating. My child is too slim. My child is too slim. When you check the child, what is wrong with the child? You want a fat, chubby child. Sometimes those children are fat and chubby because they are eating too much. That's the truth. So, why are you so obsessed with fat children? Okay, your child is still cute. A cute child is a cute child. Whether it's fat or slim, a cute child is a cute child. Don't be obsessed with fat children. Don't be obsessed with your children's complexion. Anyway, that one is a topic for another day. But yes, just give your child healthy food make sure they eat as long as they are eating as long as what your children are eating is not nutrient deficient okay so you're not giving them just pap like some people give their children just pap i don't get it because pap yes is, is healthy but it's not that healthy it is basically carbs okay it's basically one type of carb so yeah it is healthy but it's not that healthy as long as you're not feeding your child just bread and uh, what 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 some of you self is even so bad that your child is actually eating everything no. but because your child is not fat you are angry why you are you fat are you fat you're a very skinny person your husband is very skinny you're you as in when i mean skinny i mean your frame is skinny because there are people that are 
huge like me. But are people that actually have a very skinny, petite frame, okay? Your petite, your husband is petite, but you want a child that looks like mine. How? It's not going to be possible. So allow that child to grow. Allow that child to, to be happy. Don't be stressing yourself. Sleep, madam. Sleep. <laughs> and then my last unpopular opinion, and this one is the one that, hey, I was like, hey, should I say this on the internet? Oh, you are going to come for me. But I'm going to say it, okay? I am unapologetic about it, <laughs> right? And that is... Motherhood should be celebrated, right? But it should not be celebrated above anybody else, okay? So the fact that you are a mom does not make you stronger than a man. The fact that you are a mom does not make you stronger than a woman who does not have kids, okay? You are a mom because you were built to be a mom, okay? You were built to be a mom. Like, you literally were built to be a mom. So don't make it look as if, ah, men cannot even handle motherhood because if, if a man should, should, should feel labor pain, he'll just die. It's a lie. Men go through painful things as well that we, too, we, cannot, we cannot withstand, okay? Let's stop, let's stop making this look as if it is we are above everyone else because we are... No, we're not above everyone else, okay? We all have our strengths. Like I said, motherhood should be celebrated. I'm so proud to be a mom. I'm so happy to be a mom. I feel like everybody should be clapping for me on the road because I'm a mom, okay? I'm so proud of it, but I will not use it and spite my husband and say, eh, after all, I, I carry them for nine months, so you don't have a say or you shouldn't have a say. No, if he could, he would. If men could, they would, okay? It's not like men and women, we are both built the same way to have kids and then men are like, oh my God, I cannot, I cannot handle motherhood, so I'm not going to do it, so you do it. No, that's not what happened okay they don't they cannot do it they and they literally cannot do it so i cannot come and use it as a yardstick to say i am stronger than my husband or i am better than my husband because he cannot have kids no or i am better than a woman who does not have kids i'm better than a woman who refuses to have kids because me i had kids she she's just there yeah, doing shakara up and down she cannot have kids no it does not make you better in any way shape or form okay even a woman who was built to have kids and chose not to have them I am not stronger than her. To me, it's even strength. <laughs> hey, hey, it is even a lot of strength for you to say you don't want to have kids. Like when I see them, I'm like, I cut cap for you because it, my whole soul and being have have always yearned to be a mom since I was since I was a baby. Okay, so when I see people who don't have that same you know yearning or who don't want to have moms, I'm like, how how are you doing it? Like how how do you do it, sis? Because I can't even relate. I don't even understand it. Okay, so to me. It is strength in different areas, okay? Being a man, men have their own strengths. Being a woman, we still have our own strengths. A man's strength is not more than mine because, oh, he's lifting heavy things. He's uh, he's uh, doing difficult jobs. He's fighting in the war or whatever, whatever. Okay, I agree. I applaud you, sir. You are very strong. But you can't come and tell me that you are stronger than me because I can't do those things. Because I wasn't built to do those things. That's my own Point. Okay, do you get my point? Like, we are all built differently. Okay, so if you weren't built to have kids, I will not lodge it over you that you were not built to have kids. Okay, and because you are stronger than me physically, I will not, you cannot come and make me, you cannot come and tell me that I am weak simply because I don't have your type of strength. Okay. Am I making my point clear? I hope I am. I'm actually sweating, so I'm trying to end this video here. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys get my point. So for me, being a mom should be celebrated, but it is not something that we should use and be making other people feel bad or saying that we are better than everyone else because we are moms or when you see someone that is single, you're like, ah, you, you won't understand. Go and have kids first for you to understand. No, don't say that. That's, that's a very wrong thing to say. Or you see a mom who doesn't have kids and you're like, as in, or, or you see a woman who is married and doesn't have kids and you're like, ah, you are so lucky you don't have kids. Eh, eh. No, don't say that to her, okay? You don't know what she's going through. You don't know what she wants with, in her life. So don't come and say, ah, you're so lucky that you don't have kids. Or you won't understand you don't have kids. Eh, keep it to yourself. You don't understand. Keep your understanding to yourself. We don't want to understand what you're going through with your 10 children. And yeah, and that also goes to people, people who have, you know, multiple kids. Because I have three kids, you have five. You don't feel like you're a superwoman. No. Not a superwoman, no. You just don't have birth control. Finish. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking like that. No, you don't, you don't have self-control or best control. Not come and say I'm, I'm not a spare woman because I have only three kids. Or because somebody has only one kid and you, you have ten. Then you are somehow more superior. No, man, auntie. You're the only one that had uh, be fruitful and multiply. You're not the only one. So what is your problem? So yeah, in a nutshell, celebrate your motherhood. Motherhood is worth celebrating. Let other people celebrate you. Let your kids celebrate you. But do not go around demanding 
to be celebrated or demanding respect simply because you have kids. It, because even teenagers are having kids, people on the streets that are, you know, having psychological issues on the streets, they are having kids, okay? So you're not exactly special for having kids. So calm down, okay? Calm yourself down and just humble yourself and, you know, tell that one to your children. Don't go and be telling everybody around that, you know, you're better than them because you have kids. Mba. That's not how it works, okay? So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed listening. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you don't agree with me, let me know your thoughts. If you agree with me, let me know your thoughts as well. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.